What is going on you guys? It's your boy Coaster Jedi back at you with another video. This time it's the top 10 wooden coasters I've ridden. So I'm not as into wooden coasters as a lot of people seem to be. I don't really like them as much as steel coasters. I find that they can't deliver the sort of experiences that I enjoy as much, but you can solve some really fantastic wooden coasters out there. And today I'll be counting down my top 10 favorites that I have ridden overall of all of my credits. So I just looked at my list of my top 155, every credit I have ranked, and pulled out the wooden ones. So let's get started. At number 10, we have Invader at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. And this is a pretty fun ride. It's on the smaller side, but it's still very enjoyable. It's got some nice transitions. The first drop is great with an amazing hand chopper element. Get some decent air time, especially on that drop and a couple of the hills. It is on the shorter side, so it would be nice if there was a bit more track length just to go along with it. But this ride also does feature some solid theming, so that gives it some points. And number nine is Yankee Cannonball at Canopy Lake. And this is a very fun, smooth, and enjoyable ride. Sometimes you get some good airtime on it, and sometimes you don't. It really just depends. When I rode it, I rode it back in 2016. Whenever I rode on the right side, I got some good airtime, but whenever I rode on the left, I didn't get any airtime at all. So it was sort of a strange experience. I don't know if it's still running like that, but that was my personal experience. But it's a very classic coaster, smooth, and with some good airtime if you can find it. Next up, we have Lightning Racer, and this ride is kind of polarizing because it really has its biggest fans who swear that it's one of the best coasters at Hershey Park, and it also has people who think it's overrated and forceless. I'm sort of in the middle. I think that it's a fun, enjoyable ride. It's very smooth, and the racing aspect is great, but it didn't overall really impress me. It doesn't have much airtime. It's not super forceful, but it's a fun, enjoyable ride experience, and plus, it almost never has a line. Whenever I go to Hershey Park, this thing is almost always a walk-on. And they're really good about dueling this ride, so that's always a plus. Next up we have Thunderhead, which is a GCI, and what many people consider to be one of the best GCIs out there. I thought it was enjoyable, but nothing crazy. The airtime's okay. Um, it's definitely some airtime, but it's not that great. Uh, but the station flyby is really fun, and it has a decent layout. The problem I had with it is it just has some very rough patches. It's not a very smooth or graceful ride, and I know the wooden coasters aren't always supposed to be smooth, and that's one thing I don't love about wooden coasters, but it's still an enjoyable experience. I just wish that a few of the rough patches had been smoothed out, and it might have been higher on this list. Number six, we have Wooden Warrior, and I was actually shocked when I went through my... Um, rankings and found this was my number six wooden coaster. I was absolutely surprised. But this thing is fun. It's got some good airtime. It's very smooth and it's a great family coaster to introduce kids to airtime and to other forces. So I haven't ridden this since 2016, but I remember getting some great airtime on this thing. Every hill gave some good airtime. And even though it's small, it's very fun. It is a little bit of a short ride, which is unfortunate, but I get how it's not meant to be this giant ride for Quasi, but for what it is, it's very enjoyable. And now we've come to the top five. Number five is Comet. And so Comet is always a special coaster to me. I really enjoy this thing. It's very smooth, especially for its age. It's got some good airtime. So my problem is sometimes the rides are inconsistent. I've gotten rides that have been absolutely incredible when I've been flying out of my seat like crazy and it's been like top 25 level. And I've also gotten some rides that are just kind of okay and they have a little bit of airtime but not a lot. So it really just depends on the day. I've had two times when they've been insane and two times when it's been overrated. So I just thought I'd average it out and put it in the middle. But this thing is fun, it's fantastic. Even if you don't catch it on one of its better days, it still runs very smooth, and has some good airtime to offer. Next up we have Swamp Fox, and this might not be a coaster that you've heard of, but it's at this park called Family Kingdom in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And this thing is so underrated, it is so much fun. From the drop to the incredible airtime, it's really great. If this ride were a little bit longer, it's very, very short. It could have been one of the best rides out there. It's still in my top 50, though, um, because of its standing airtime, and it's such a smooth ride. Every hill sends you absolutely flying. I had no expectations coming into this. I thought it was going to be sort of like your average coaster, kind of like um, like Excalibur at uh, Funtown Splashtown or, or something 
along those lines, like medium-sized wooden coasters at smaller parks are usually like that, but this was so much different. This was fantastic. What a great ride. Now reaching our top three, these are the elite wooden coasters I've ridden. Number three is Phoenix. And so this thing is so much fun. I tried not to hype myself up for it too much because I didn't know if it would actually deliver on airtime. And at first I didn't think it did, but then we reached the double up and double down. And that was, oh my gosh, that was insane. You really fe felt like you were gonna die on this thing. It was so crazy with some great airtime. I don't even know where to go with that. And then the last run of Airtime Hills was fantastic. You went flying out of your seat. Uh, unfortunately, this ride did suffer from some from some rough patches, especially um, in some of the turnarounds that just kind of was pretty rough and not very enjoyable. But the Airtime was definitely worth it and definitely made up for it. And number two, number one and number two are very close. They've flip flops back and forth in my top 10, and they are actually currently sitting right next to each other. But at number two, we have Lightning Rod. Lightning Rod is so much fun. I know now they're converting it to more of a steel coaster, but when I wrote it, it was a wooden coaster, so I'm just counting it as a wooden coaster. Uh, but it has a great setting. It goes out back in. He really uses the terrain, which is fantastic. You'd love to see that. The drop is great. The elements are good. You have some some good airtime. The wave turn is absolutely fantastic. And for crying out loud, it's a launched wooden coaster. It's crazy. It's such a strange feeling. Even though the launch is pretty weak and not very powerful, it's still a one-of-a-kind experience. And the quad down is very fun as well. I just found it to be slightly overhyped. It didn't give as much airtime as I was anticipating. And I think people rank this as like the number one coaster out there, or number two maybe behind Steel Vengeance. I didn't get that, but it's still a very enjoyable, smooth, and fun ride. And at number one, I'm sure no one is surprised about this, we have El Toro, possibly the greatest wooden coaster in the world. This thing is fantastic and such a great ride between the incredible first drop and the first two camelbacks, which were just insane, to the rolling thunder hill. You, there's some excellent airtime on this ride. Even though not all of it is focused on airtime, the airtime moments are all really good. I do wish they had been able to smooth out some of those turns, which are pretty rough and not very enjoyable. But outside of that, the, the ride is very smooth. And it's just a one-of-a-kind ride that you're not going to find anywhere else, at least not in the U.S. It's fantastic. Although the ride is temporary, temporarily closed, I'm not really sure what's going on with that, leaving its future uncertain. Hopefully it will be back and running before too long so that it can thrill all of its riders with its fantastic airtime. I actually, when I was riding this, I wrote this in 2019. Uh, I had bruises the next day on my hips because of how much airtime I had gotten on it and my hips dug into the restraints. So it's a really crazy ride. It's just fantastic. And that is why it's the number one wooden coaster I've ridden. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment your top 5, top 10, top 15 wooden coasters that you've ridden and give your thoughts on my list. And yes, Boulder Dash was not on this list. Have a good one guys. See you in the next video.